Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I am um, for I would do a little story time with you guys. I'm gonna do a look as I do it. And if you've ever seen my video, actually you probably haven't because it was ages ago, like years ago, I posted a video about how I became a makeup artist and my makeup journey. And I just kind of wanted to focus on one part of that today. And I wanna talk about how I got my first ever job with MAC and it was my first ever um, job in makeup apart from I did like a Christmas temp job in like a perfumery thing and I was Clinique and um, Estee Lauder there but I, I, that wasn't like profesh you know. Um, so I wanted to talk about my interview today. It's a little bit embarrassing. But I asked you guys on my Instagram a while back. I posted four of my looks and asked you guys to choose um, which one you wanted to um, see a tutorial off. So I've chosen one that kind of got the most votes and I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna just kind of have like a story time you guys and tell you about my interview with Mac. So let me just get started. I'm gonna zoom into my face a little bit more. Um, I'm going to be using the two palettes from the Electric Wonder collection. These are limited editions. There are colours in here that you can buy um, regular with MAC as well. Um, yeah, so let's do it. Just before we get into that, if you don't know who I am, my name is Robert, I'm a professional makeup artist and it is my goal here on YouTube to help you become the best you can be at makeup or a pro or not pro or like somebody who just likes to play but plays really well. So if that sounds like something you are interested in, then please consider subscribing to my channel. Let's do it. Let's go this eye. I'm only going to do one because I hate wasting makeup and I'm just going to take it straight off after this video anyway. So I'll tell you guys what products I'm using as I'm going. So this is my Makeup Revolution Prime and Look Eyeshadow Base. I love this product. I think it's really, really um, good at being an eyeshadow base. <laughs> So as I mentioned before, I wanted to talk to you guys about my interview with Mac, but just to give you a little bit of background into um, myself and, and makeup to start with, where I grew up um, in the south of England, there wasn't very many um, like makeup brands, if that makes sense. So we had um, a Debenhams nearby, and that was like, um, Debenhams is like almost like a big department store, if that makes sense. So they sell clothes, they sell... Um, uh, makeup and all this kind of stuff. But the only brands that were in there were Benefit, Clinique and Clarins. So they were all kind of what I consider, well to me Clinique and Clarins are for older people and then Benefit is for younger people. I know they, you know, act like they're not but not a fan. So I didn't really know any other brands apart from you know Estee Lauder, Clinique and things like that. So I was working for Topshop um, top Man actually, I was working for Top Man and I think I randomly decided, this is when I was 18 years old, but I wanted to move to London and I wanted to become a makeup artist and I, originally I wanted to do prosthetic makeup because I really liked like that creation process and creating characters and I think I was really into like fantasy things and I really liked art, like art was my thing in school because I couldn't really do anything else, I was crap at English and I was crap at maths and science so Art and drama were like my main two things that I really, really got on with and could actually do, you know? So when it came to a career, I was like, you know what? Makeup artistry, but being a prosthetic makeup artist would be amazing. So my primer's all ready to go. I'm just gonna use the shade Valley of the Goddess as a transition shade. Yeah, so I started looking into makeup schools and back then makeup schools like were expensive, maybe not as much as they were now because makeup really wasn't like um, like a well-known thing to do, like not everyone wanted to be a makeup artist, makeup was very different back then. I decided, you know, I can't afford this, they didn't do student loans for makeup back then so you either had to pay outright or, you know, you just weren't going to do it. I think it actually it was my mum's idea. She was like, why don't you just get a job doing makeup and then see kind of where that takes you, if you like it, like get the basics down first. I was like, good idea. What if I absolutely hate it? So I had never in my life ever heard of MAC before. <laughs> I, ne I didn't know the brand existed. Um, I didn't know what they did. I think I Googled something like job, um, makeup jobs, London, um, <laughs> and then the one for Mac in Selfridges on Oxford Street came up, and I was like, yeah, why not? So basically, I um, sent my CV, and I applied for the job. So the process was, you would apply, 
online, then you would get a phone call when you did a phone interview. So then if you pass that phone interview, you would then go in store and do an interview in store, which back then was sort of a makeup test and your actual interview together. Now I believe it's separate, if that makes sense. They'll like phone us whenever you're ready. So, and then we can do an interview. So I gave them a call and I remember the woman was like, so have you got like, have you, I'm feeling like she shouldn't have done this, but she was like, have you prepped? You know, have you looked into Mac? Do you have like some research? And I was like, no. And she was like, so how about I give you a while to go and research um, <laughs> Mac and then come back and give us a call? I was like, okay, fine. So I basically went on, um, what did I do? Was Wikipedia around? I don't think Wikipedia was even around then, but I went online and I Googled Mac. I think I went on their website and at the time, the collection that was out, or just kind of finishing was the Barbie collection. I don't remember that, the visuals for the Barbie collection were stunning. So I printed that out, no idea, had it up on a laptop, and I printed some information up, out about Mac. I kind of looked up the history, who invented it, where it comes from, all this other stuff. Um, but that's all I knew. I didn't know how the products worked. I didn't know anything about the products. So I phoned them back and I had all these printouts in front of me, all the, um, you know, all the kind of basics that you get asked in an interview. And uh, then I had my interview on the phone. And I think that she asked me questions, which to me back then didn't make sense. She was like, so when you wear, um, how do you think people feel when they wear a lipstick? And I was like, oh, really confident? Um, <laughs> things like that, which is a good enough answer. And she didn't ask me too much. I mean, she asked me about, um, she asked me about my, you know, knowledge, my favorite products, all the kind of like basic things you would really kind of expect. And then I think she asked me my favorite product, but because I didn't know the products, I just said whatever I saw in front of me. And I was like, oh, I really like this Barbie blush. I didn't even know it had a name. Like I didn't even know that products had a name. Do you know what I mean? Like it would be something like, the blush is called Cheeky Kiss. Or you know, <laughs> something. I just thought, yeah, the pink blush from the Barbie collection. That was my answer, I think. And then somehow I got through that interview and passed the phone interview. Then I just had to wait for a phone call to organize um, like an interview in store. So I had to get my own model. I didn't have any brushes, so I couldn't take my own brushes, but I had to get my own model and do a look. So I asked one of my friends, can you come with me to London so I can do this interview? She was, you know, really pretty. So I thought easy, it's gonna be easy on her. I had basically, my only experience with doing makeup on other people was my best friend got hold of like a college like makeup kit. Like you're going to like do like a makeup course, like and there was a kit and it just wasn't being used. So I used that and honestly it was like the worst, cheapest makeup. But at the time I didn't know anything about makeup and I just thought, yeah, that's great. Um, and I used to like practice on my mum. And it, I would only do ever do kind of one eye, which like I'm doing now. <laughs> but it always used to go like horribly wrong. And you know, I I would make her look like someone that wasn't even her. Like it'd be awful. It was just some of the worst makeup I think I've ever done in my life. But that's practicing, isn't it? And I didn't know at the time um, what kind of standards Mac were in terms of artistry and how amazing their makeup artists were and what they did in the fashion industry and all this stuff. I didn't know any of that. I just thought they sold makeup in a shop. So because I had only had that kit, that kind of like basic beauty therapy kit, I thought it was a great idea, again, not knowing Max price point, to ask my mum to buy me um, a MAC palette. So a new collection had just come out. I think it was called Naughty Nauticals. If it isn't, I'll correct it on screen here. And it was kind of all like nautical. So it was like blue and white and yellow and red. It was a really, really nice collection. So I was like, oh my God, I want this palette. And there was a navy blue, a brown, a yellow, and a white. And I got my mom to buy that palette, not knowing at the time it was like 40 pounds or 30 pounds, whatever. And I practiced using that a few times. Um, oh, I wish I still had it. I think I took the eyeshadows out of it kind of burnt them out and put them in my um, freelance kit. But it was such a nice palette, so I practiced with that a few times. I thought, that's fine, you know, I've got it now, I'll, I'll be absolutely fine. And then the day came off the actual interview. So me and my friend went up to London, we got the train, and we went up to Selfridges. And the way the day went was, 
that I had my, um, it was like a normal interview, like a talking to me, you know, asking me about my um, background in makeup, my retail experience, everything like that. Basically like interview stuff, like as you expect, like why do you want to work for Mac? What's the, um, why Selfridges, all this kind of thing. And for me, um, again, I really didn't know anything about the brand. I didn't know, I'd never heard of Selfridges before. How bad is that? I sound like I've grown up in like the countryside when I really hadn't. So yeah, I was actually kind of, I was really, really nervous. Like I, I think I actually remember like, oh, I was sh like shaking, like my jaw was shaking. And even the, the manager was like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, no, I'm fine. I'm just really nervous, you know? And I was 18, like I hadn't done anything before. I don't think I'd ever been to London like without my parents. So yeah, I was dead nervous. And it came to doing the actual um, makeup. So at this kind of time, I kind of relaxed. And I think I had pre like prepped my friend. I was like, don't ask for anything crazy. Although crazy back then was like a red lipstick. Like it wasn't anything like you would get now with all like, you know, people weren't as experimental with color and um, texture and things like that. So like Kim Kardashian, it wasn't even famous yet. Like that wasn't the standard of makeup. It was more like JLo, do you know what I mean? Like natural and glowy. So I was kind of briefed by the trainer who was really, really nice to me, made me feel really comfortable. We'll tidy up this section in a minute with um, foundation. Um, and just made me feel, yeah, like really, really comfortable. And I just remember she was like, two things that they were gonna look for was a liquid liner, which I mean, like every makeup artist knows that sometimes it's hit or miss with liquid liner, no matter how long you've been doing it, you know? Um, and a lip liner. So I was like, fine, I've never done lip liner before and I've never done liquid liner before. So there were two things, but at the time I was like, well, how hard can it be? drawing a line on someone's eyelid and around their lips. I got to it, I started <laughs> doing the makeup, and you know what, I thought, let me just play it safe. And part of me, for some reason, just ignored the fact that she had asked for lip liner. So I did the eye makeup, and I basically did half a white eyelid this way, and half a blue eyelid. No blending, I didn't, again, I didn't know what blending was. So it was literally cut down the middle, half and half. And I remember I came to doing her skin and I had all these MAC brushes in front of me, like the height of like professional brushes. And I went to the trainer and the person who was interviewing me and I was like, please, can I have a sponge? And I wanted one of those like triangle sponges. Um, Cause that's what was like in my like little crappy kit that I had that I was like practicing with. She was like, yeah, bless her, she got me um, she got me one of those sponges and I did her foundation with that. I, if I remember, the foundation match was pretty good, but the colours were chosen for me before. So I think they had like seen my model and then chosen the colours for me. And I remember being so proud of this makeup and throughout it, the staff at MAC had come in over and looking and smiling at me, being like, oh, it looks great. It did not look great. They were being overly nice. I was having like a really good time. Like I was really enjoying myself doing this makeup. So it came to doing the liner. Um, I think I did it and then smudged it in because it looked so bad. Um, and then I was like, you know what? I don't have time. I, I've never done lip liner before. I'm just not going to do it. So my time was up and then the trainer comes over and she was like, do you want a little bit more time to do the lip liner. And me not wanting to be like, no, because I tried not to and I've never done lip liner before in my life, was like, oh yeah, absolutely, I'm sorry, I forgot, you know, I forgot to include that. So I did the lip liner and I think if I remember, it was something like, I think it was cherry lip pencil. So it was that really classic, like really strong red um, color which intimidated me anyway, like a red lip at the time. Um, but I actually think it was kind of like, maybe part of the look, like the collection at that time was um, was to have like a red lip, you know? So I do this lip liner and literally, it was, it was awful, like I remember it now. So I think I did a pretty good job going around the outside here, but on the inside where, where I had messed up so much, there were so many lines going everywhere and everything like that. And in my mind, I was like, how do I fix this before the trainer comes over and sees what a mess I've made off this lip? So I remember there was a lip gloss in front of me and it was one of the Viva Glam lip glosses. And um, I thought, okay, great. What I'll do then is that I'll put on so much lip gloss 
that um, it covers the um, <laughs> it covers the liner. And for a gloss to cover a liner, I mean, you have to do quite a bit. And if you've ever used MAC lip gloss, you only need to use the smallest amount because it's very highly pigmented and it can get quite sticky if you use too much. At that point, I was like, you know, I have no more options. Like I need to kind of get this, um, I need to get this look finished so they think I'm amazing at makeup, which by then I'm sure they had made up the choice that I was actually really terrible. Um, so I literally got a disposable wand. Actually, no, I didn't. I kept getting told off for double dipping because I had no idea about hygiene because I hadn't been to a makeup school. And I literally got the wand and I smothered her lips in this gloss. Like it was gloopy. It was, it was like trickling down. And I just managed to move it all around to a point where I was like, okay, it's sitting, it's not moving. I mean, there's a lot, but you know, hopefully it's not gonna move too much. And I said to my model, I was like, okay, whatever you do, when she comes over, do not talk. Because whenever she moved her mouth, like we were talking to each other, because obviously it, it was all going wrong for me. So I was like, you know, shit, 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 shit. Like, does it look okay, does it look okay? She kept saying yes, even though it didn't. Um, <laughs> you could just see it, you know? Have you ever put on lip gloss and just did like, and it kind of like all strings in between your mouth? It was just doing that all the time. So I said to her, when she comes over, whatever you do, just don't talk, just smile, you know, but she hadn't spoken to her yet. The trainer hadn't spoken to my model. She hadn't, um, you know, there was no reason for me to think that she was gonna talk. So I was like, let me just get this on and get it over and done with. The girl comes over really nice and is like, um, to me, okay, it looks great. It didn't. Is there anything you want to add? You know, take away anything like that? And I was like, no, I'm really happy with it. You know, I, I just, I think I just wanted the whole thing to be over. And then she goes to my model. <laughs> she looks at my model and she says, what do you think of her makeup? And oh, it, it, <sighs> she like opens her mouth and I can see like all this droop. It was all sticking from lip to lip, like lip gloss strings. And she was like, yeah, I think it looks great. And she couldn't talk properly because all this gloss was going in her mouth. And it was just, and I just remember being devastated. And I was like, I can't believe it. She, it was just, oh, it was awful. It embarrasses me now just thinking about it. But I was so happy. I was, after that interview, it was actually one of the, my favorite interviews I've ever had because it was so much fun. Um, and I've never done like a full, I'm shaking my lash by the way, I've never done like a full face of makeup on someone before and got through the whole thing using like really professional products. So she was like, yeah, thank you so much for coming in. And I was like, well, thank you for um, having me. I said like, I had so much fun. That was like such a fun interview. And I think I just got on really, really well with the girl who was interviewing me anyway. Like we had a little chat occasionally. And I just remember like leaving that interview and sitting on the train home and getting in the car on the way home, back from the train station, and being like, oh my God, I'm so happy with what I've done. I think that interview's gone really well. God, these lashes are long. You know, I think, I, I think, I'm, I think I'm in there, I think I'm done. You know, I think I've done a really good job. Um, and I didn't take a picture because back then, back then before phones were invented, no, we didn't have like, it wasn't like a thing to take pictures of everything, you know, I don't think, I even had an iPhone yet. I think I was still on a flip phone and the camera quality was like, um, you know, like the first camera ever invented. It was pretty awful. But yeah, I was so happy. And I remember it wasn't that long. I think it was maybe like um, a week later or something like that. I got a phone call from Mac and Selfridges and just to say that I got a job, not as an artist, but as a cashier, which I was like, great. They told me on the phone, they were like, you know, we'll train you up because there's still some work to do there. They put it really nicely, actually. It was like a nice way of saying, you're actually really crap and we don't want you to do makeup on the floor. But that's literally what happened. I got my job in Selfridges. That was the first ever store I worked for with MAC. Let me zoom out of my face a little bit. So that was my first ever job with MAC. I started out on the tills as a cashier, no makeup training at all. And then they trained me up while I was there. Some of my managers, who I'm really thankful um, to them, 
while I was there would let me go on the shop floor like during quiet periods and let me do like foundation matches and things like that and there's no better place to learn makeup than on a beauty counter, a makeup counter. Like go and do a makeup course that's like basic, here's how you do a smoky eye, here's how you blend, here's how you be hygienic. But then go and work on a makeup counter, you see hundreds of customers a day in some places. You do loads of different skin tones, loads of different skin textures, loads of different eye shapes, you know, there's so much to do. So I learn everything, literally everything that I know I learned with MAC from working in Selfridges, the store in Brixton and Morley's in South London and then the old pro store in Soho before it became the double one. It was like a small little store. But like I said, everything I've learned about makeup, I've learned with MAC. It's just, it was, you know, one of the best things I've done. And when people ask me how, um, you know, to become a makeup artist or to do whatever, you really have to constantly educate yourself. YouTube is nothing compared to an everyday situation of um, color matching someone, you know, or the everyday situation of fucking up someone's eye makeup and having to take it off and start again like you learn so so much so that would be my advice to everyone as well is to just jump in there become a cashier or become you know something you know and then learn makeup that way especially now there's some makeup schools out there that charge way 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 too much um you know to educate their students and i just think it takes a piss really like you, you know it's just dumb but yes that is my so that was my story, that was my first ever MAC interview that went slightly wrong, but also pretty good because then I got the job in the end. Um, yeah, I hope you like this look. There's more pictures of it over on my Instagram. It was actually a very easy kind of just halo eye to do and then add a little of that nice greeny brown in the inside corner, that almost like beetle kind of shell color. But yeah, thank you so much guys. If you want to see more videos like this, more tutorials, very in-depth tutorials, um, and more advice on makeup, things like that, then please consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you very soon. Bye.